Good morning. This is Dr. Sayed from DBS Institute of Technology, Kavale, Andhra Pradesh. DBS Institute of Technology is one of the best institutions in Nellore district. We have very good facilities, labs, workshops, and so many things are there with very good professors who are having PhD qualifications. Today, I'm going to discuss about petroleum technology directional drilling. Of course, everybody knows what is petroleum technology. And most of the people knows that how we are getting the oil and gas from the earth. It's an ancient technology but a lot of developments has been made in this technology. So one of the technology is called directional drilling. Directional drilling is a high tech. Today we are going to discuss about this directional drilling. Directional drilling is an integral part of oil and gas industry since 1920. What we do here, we do vertical holes, that is drilling the vertical holes in the earth. But in direction technology, we are drilling the holes in different angles. Due to some of the reasons which we are going to discuss further. Vertical holes are drilled vertically from the surfaces. Why we need direction drilling? The question arises, how we drill direction drilling? Another question arises. Multiple wells are drilled from the same vertical well structure. What is this? Say, drilling is drilled by vertical holes. Drilling is drilled by vertical holes. Now, we are drilling some directional drilling in different angles due to the some of the reasons. For example, we have drilled a hole that is a bore, we have drilled a uh, drilling bore, estimating that we are going to reach the oil resources. But the drill, the drill bit goes to somewhat different places, that is offset from that point. Then what we will have to do? Whether we will have to close down the bore? No. Suppose if you close down the bore, Whatever the money you spend, the labor you spend, everything will go on waste. That's why directional drilling is most useful in these circumstances. The dive hole, that is the drilling hole to the oil resources. These holes are drilled vertically at straight point, but finishes up to a considerable higher horizontal distance from the surface starting point. These wells are known as deviated holes. While deviating the hole, a vertical hole to certain angle to reach the resource point. 
The technique employed during the drilling of them are known as directional drilling. If a well is being drilled as a deviated well, we should know exactly where the bit is located at any time. How you know that your bit is located at which point? See, this is another technology here. We call this as surveying of bits. We survey the holes by some instruments and we will find out the location of the bit. The hole must be continuously surveyed to keep the track of its direction and its inclination. So, directional drilling is divided into four sections. There is four important parts. Section number one, in this, the purpose of drilling wells, which are not vertical. We are going to discuss why we need directional wells. Section two, the tools which you are using in directional drilling. We need a lot of tools, equipment for doing this directional drilling. Number three, the techniques used in directional drilling. That is, what is the technique here? We are making a vertical hole to a certain angle. How we are going to deviate this hole? This is the technique here. That is, how to increase the decrease the hole angles. Number four, the equipment and techniques used to survey the hole. See, surveying of a hole is an important point to find out the location of the drilling pit. Then, the purpose of drilling wells, which are not vertical, that is, anciently we were drilling vertical wells. Now we are drilling both the vertical wells along with the directional drilling where there are some problems. To solve these problems, we are using the directional drilling. Number two, the tools which are used in directional drilling. Now we will see what are the different reasons for directional drilling. There are several applications of directional drilling. For example, multiple wells from artificial structure. First, you will have to understand that how we are going to drill a hole vertically or in an angle position. Multiple wells are multiple wells from artificial structure. We need an artificial structure to drill a hole. Though it is vertical or directional. So first we will have to construct an artificial structure. See when you do, see drilling can be done both from offshore and onshore. Mostly this directional drilling will be done from the offshore. This is the most common of all directional drilling applications when you use offshore drilling. You imagine a field lies between the sea. See, there is an oil field beneath the sea. We will have to procure that oil above the sea. So, to procuring this oil, we will have to drill a hole. So for this, we make surveys, we make plannings, and finally we will drill a hole. That is vertical hole, assuming that we are going to reach that, uh, reach that uh, oil source. But finally what happens, after drilling it, the hole will, will shift it directly we shifted somewhat little difference away from the oil well. 
from the system from the oil so what we will have to do now whether we will have to close down the well no not necessary because we have the technology of direction and fill we can use this techniques of directional drilling and finally you are going to this that resource so from the platform that is what we call it as artificial structure as an offshore platform i think you might have seen these offshore platforms in the movies or somewhere else in the internet offshore platform is a very big platform it costs some crore surfaces suppose if there are so many fields under the sea we need each one platform to each oil resource so it's very costly if you know the techniques the technology of directional drilling we can drill many holes from many holes from one platform so directional drilling is very very useful and we can save a lot of money from the directional drill the economic feasibility of the offshore oil industry is completely depends on the ability to drill deviated holes now you see the you are going to now you are seeing a diagram here this is on the top this is on the top this is on the top there is a offshore platform from this offshore platform we are drilling many holes vertical holes angle holes this is deviated holes and so many holes we can drill 5 10 15 how many holes we want we can drill it. so drilling multiple wells from artificial artificial structure that is why we drill is to reach to the so many resource of the oil and gas wells then this technique can be applied for and in accessible locations in accessible locations where the vertical drill can't reach to that position then we drill it vertically again we deviate the hole to the resources to the inaccessible locations another thing is fault drilling sometimes what happens assuming the oil resource is at so and so point we drill a hole but it goes out of that point then again we are going to correct this point that is called fault drilling another thing is a salt drone salt dome drilling see under the sea there are salt domes if we drill a hole vertically through the salt drone the salt will also be involved in the oil so we will have to face a lot of problems if we drill directly from the salt domes so for this purpose again we utilize this directional drill another thing is side track drill this is one it what we do we do first we do vertical drilling again it goes wrong then again we correct it with side track drill this is another thing drilling a relief well say so it's a dangerous one in drilling we need a lot of safety each and every step you will have to think about the safety so in the oil fields there will be a lot of safety officers safety consultants so why because it's a dangerous thing see what happens when you drill a hole when the pressure is developed they the complete well will come out with oil fill so we need a relief well at that time we are going to 
do the release the release well by the direction of it all this we are going to see further so you can see here this is a and uh, this is an offshore platform from this offshore platform see vertical drilling again this is directional drilling and finally you are going to reach to the oil resources this black points are oil resources from one platform we can do different wells now you will see in accessible locations a field to be developed which lies in an awkward spot awkward spot means where we can't drill direct and it may be necessary to drill deviated development wells from a remote location these awkward places may be beneath a town or a city or a mountain we don't know but when you do the surveys we will find out where are the resources are lying it is more acceptable to drill from outside the town boundaries than by inside town areas see we found out that there are resources in a city above the resources there are many buildings are there suppose if you want to drill suppose if you want to drill we will have to drill from the buildings that we will have to spoil those buildings that's why the drilling of such type of places that is beneath the town will have to drill it from a remote locations outside of the town the other inaccessible free locations are like under river beds mountains even under the rivers there will be oil resources so we cannot use these resources we will have to recover these resources that's why we use the directional drilling even the resources are under the mountains that is uh, uh, more depth in the, below the mountain also we can drill the holes by using the direction drilling technology so this you can see this is a mountain you can see here this is a location from where where is a safe place where we started drilling vertically from here we have deviated the holes to the certain points where the resources are there one two three four many many holes now for drilling that is under the mountain also we are recovering the resources the field is located in an inaccessible spot to be developed from a remote location the location may be that is in a mountain or a bed uh, or bed river this direction drilling can be carried out from the city boundaries or from a safe remote place you can see this different photographs see this are all the inaccessible positions you can see here there is a road under the road there are some resources this also we can recover it see under this mountain you can also recover this so any place we can use directional drilling and recover the oil fields then fault drilling fault drilling a petroleum reservoir where oil has accumulated in a fault trap see oil has been trapped in a fault trap how will you have to take it out sometimes in this situation the welder is deflected across the fault for protect protection entering the oil zone in this way also eliminate the hazards of drilling a vertical well through a steep incline
pain faulty where well, it's difficult to maintain the whole direction you can see this is a faulty trap this is a faulty trap you are drilling from the top you go directly to the hole on the resource you know somewhere else you have a lot of problems then what you will have to do you can do a vertical drill and then from there you will have to direct the drill towards some angle which goes directly into the resource see this is salt dome drill this is a salt dome this is a salt dome the salt dome you can see the black spots these are the oil spots these are oil spots these this these are all the oil spots suppose if you drill from the top is directly vertical so what happens you can drill it but all the salt will be included in the oil so what you will have to do again we are using the directional drill so we drill vertically up to certain point then we can deviate our drill bit towards the oil resources it is sometimes more advantageous to drill a directional well in this situation it means that the well is not drilled to the sort which can sometimes cause problems because now we will have to face a lot of problems to use your directional drill yes side tracking side tracking is a another technique so what happens when you are drilling a hole some of our equipment some of our small equipment or some uh, tools may fall inside the well suppose if the tools fall down inside the well we cannot process the drill process so we will have to do the fishing operations the fishing is carried out to try to retrieve the equipment which is lost down in the hole sometimes however fishing operations are unsuccessful people will try to retrieve all the things which have been drowned inside the hole but sometimes they will become unsuccessful in this case in this case the hole can't be drilled further so what you will have to do shall we close down the well rather than so closing down is abandoning the hole so rather than abandon the hole a directional drilling technique can be employed here this can be deviated around the obstructions normally drilling then be continued direction after so what we are doing here suppose the tools or something has been fall down inside the bowl so what we are going to do we are going to take the side track again we will make a hole again we enter in the bowl and continue to drill so this side tracking is see the drill vertical drill now we are here maybe somewhere else here the tools has been blocked so what we will have to do you cannot proceed from here so we will have to take a side track again go to the vertical this is the technique which you are employing in the side track then this is a another thing most important in oil well drilling it is what we call it what we do it here see generally in drilling blowouts are always caused the blowouts will happen when the well creates a high pressure in the bore steps to be taken to control the situation and get back to under control it means when the pressure will arise very high the well will become blowout and we will get a lot of fires very dangerous situation which we will have to control it 
Sometimes we are going to block this. We put a cap on the surface itself. But sometimes it, will, it may not be happened because of the high pressure. We can't do it. So what do we have to do? Again, then again we will have to take the technology of directional drilling. So we drill a hole in a direct in a certain angle, and we are going to penetrate this uh, well at some point under the uh, under the under the sea or, or it is onshore uh, under the air. So control of situations can be carried out from the surface level by capping the hole. It happens, it's quite well and good, but when it's not possible, we'll have to tackle the bloat at the surface. So we'll have to drill relief wells. It is drilled from a safe location away from the bloat. A deviated relief well is drilled to intercept the wide well below the surface. What I told you, below the level, we'll have to intercept it. After drilling, communication is established between wide well and the deep well. Say wide well is where the well is got blown out. So another well were drilling it in a directional way, and you are intercepting it. This is called a relief well. What happens here? The killed fluid, which can be pumped down the relief well. You can see a clear diagram here. See, this is the main bore, what you are seeing. This well got fired. It is blown out. If a very big fire happens, nobody can reach to this well. So, away from this well, one well, real well, has been drilled here, and this is directional drilling, and it got intersected into this main well. What happens here? The gases, the gases, and the liquid. This can be come out from this well. And the relief well number two, we directly we drill it to the near the gas field. The gases can come out from this well. Then finally, what happens? The pressure will go down. Like this, we can make some techniques, we can save the well. This is a vertical well. If a vertical has a problem and begins to flow out of control, this might be sealed at a depth of the pressure. So another thing is we can seal this well at a depth also. How you are going to seal this well? See, by drilling a relief well. And the relief well will be directional drilled well that intersect the bore of the problem to drain off some of the pressure or to put the well by pumping cement into the bore. One is relieving this well. Another is to pump the cement in the bore and close the well. That's all you can't do. And again, you want to use this well, again they will do the directional drain out of this part. See, in the directional drilling, there are three patterns are there. One is basic hole type, uh, type one. Basic hole pattern, type one. This is basic hole pattern, type one. You are seeing a diagram here. This is a platform here. From here, that is the well whose shape is produced by obtaining initial deflection. See, direction, this is vertical drill. Up to this point, we do the vertical drill. From this point, we make the deflection to turn this well 
to a certain angle. After reaching this angle, we are going to drill a straight drill to the target depth. See, we know the target at the earlier stage itself. Then we know how much of uh, depth we will have to go. It is what we call this a target depth. Then we will also calculate the target defle deflection to the point of resource. This is one of the techniques, what we call a basic pole pattern type 1 technique. Number two, the basics are the basic hole pattern, fairly shallow. That is type 2. You are seeing a diagram here. You are seeing a diagram here. Here, the hole is not drilled vertically. It has a shallow angle. It has a shallow angle. From when you reach this shallow angle, and you also know the target deflection, where we will get it from this point to the target point at the depth. We make a straight directional drilling to tease that will is the oil resource. So this is another type of pattern. The deflection starts at the deep depth at the hole after the angle is established. The wall is dealt tight to the target. Finally, the wall is tied to 90 degrees or horizontal. Because why horizontal? If the point is away from here, we'll have to reach to the actual target point. Then, this is type 3. You are seeing a platform here. See, by the shape, you can say this as S type. This is a, this is a S type pattern, type 3 pattern. A S shape pattern. Where the initial deflection is produced near the surface. When the correct angle is achieved, the hole is straight until the horizontal displacement is reached. When the angle is reduced until the well is drilled vertically in the target. So, what is happening here? See, we we'll start vertical drilling from here up to a certain point. And after a certain point, we are going to give some angle, that is a direction. We are moving the direction of the vertical to a certain angle. And when you reach the horizontal, again, we will drill it horizontally up to a certain point. And again, we calculate the angle, what angle we need. It. That angle, again, we will divert the drill bit. Then finally, we will drill the well vertically to the target. Here also, we have a calculation. That is, one is target deflection. What are the angles are employed here? And this is separate topics. Which we can't uh, discuss about here. Separately, we can discuss. See, another angle here, that is, we have calculated all these angles. Then, finally, we have to calculate the depth. See, at so much of there, we are going to reduce the resources. Then, basic hole pattern type 3, to improve production the hole, to improve the production, the hole is dead with a small formation by using the geosteering technique. So, in this, still another technique is there, we are going to discuss about it. Another way to improve the production is to drill multilateral wells where a number of branches to it like the roots are in three. Say we drill a hard little directional drilling. Still, from these angles, we make some other diversions. And again, we make different drills. What we call it are the branches, branches to like the root of it. So, this is another technique which we have employed. Say one of the points, we call it as a kickoff point. What is this kickoff point? In all types of patterns, the hole is drilled vertically in the beginning. So first we drill the hole vertically. After reaching to some point, 
where the deviation required drilling angle is shaped so after drilling a vertical hole after some time after some distance we are going to change the angle of the drill that this point of deviation is called kick off point to make the deviation at a point we require a tool called deflection tool so this kick off point where we are turning you are uh, turning the drill bit to certain angle how you are going to do it this will be done by a deflection tool so deflection deflection tool is an important tool deflection tools are more important in deviating the hole this is used for deviating the hole from vertical to certain angle the basic hole pattern to be considered when drilling a deviated hole so first so if you want to do use this deflection tool to deviate the hole first you will have to consider a pattern which pattern you are going to use it we already discussed about these patterns which we called as basic hole pattern fairly shallow pattern yes shape pattern deflection tools the deflection tool is a device which is placed in the hole and cause the drill bit to deviate from its path so deflection tool really it is a small tool but it works a mold so deflection tool is like a wedge it is a semi circular piece and it have a place to rotate the drill bit inside this deflection tool we are going to see in a diagram there are a number of deviating tools which can correct the unwanted deviation and for making required deviations see after all this is the shape of a wedge suppose if we keep a wedge to a uh, to a string which is traveling vertically when it touches the wedge automatically it uh, changes its route to a some direction so it is the same thing here happening the most common tool is a see another tool this is somewhat advanced tool what we call this as downhole hydraulic motor with bent stem so it is an advanced tool we are going to discuss about it see a whip stock that is what you said say like a wedge whip stock is like a wedge type tool this is a standard removable whip stock this is a one of the oldest deflection employed from the ancient period it consists of a long wedge stage shield assembly with a thick end at the bottom so it consists of a long wedge shape steel assembly with a thick end at the bottom at one side bottom at another side it is a thin edge it has a concave face in the inner side that is it is a semi circular shell can you face that to rotate that little bit which holds and guides the drilling assembly it also holds gate holds and guide the drilling assembly it will move the drill bit at a required angle so here we can see four types of drill bits and bits this and wedges what you call as whip stocks all these are this four are whip stocks these are all drill bits bits of different types this is a this is a we call it as pdc that is polycrystal line diamond compact this is b we call it as roller cone drill bits this is c what we call it as diamond impregnated and tungsten carbide bit this is d what we call it as cast hole bit so different types of bits we are using as per the different sites 
See, now we are going to see some of the detailed advance downhole hydraulic motors. A rod assembly connects to the rotor bearing shaft assembly. A rod is assembly connects to the rotor bearing shaft assembly. First, then the shaft assembly connects to the drill, then connects to the bit stub, not the bit, bit stub. This bit stub, it can move, it can move all, all around. To which the bit is attached. The bit is attached to the bit step. When the mud pressure turns the rotor, say it's a hydraulic motor, but it is run, it is moved by the mud pressure, not many other motors. It drives the drill bit to the connecting assembly. The bit turns without turning the drill pipe. So the bit will turn. But the pipe never turns. When the positive type displacement motor is used with a bent star, it becomes a deflection too. Because it has what is called, uh, it is uh, the drill bit is there. Above the drill bit, a stub is there. Because of this stub, it can move to any angle. That is, it becomes a de deflection tool because of this bit stub. The bit or mill attached to the top of the bit star before it is run in the hole. The procedure. How will you do it? The bit, that is, will string. It is attached to the top of the bit star before it is run in the hole. It is attached. This is temporary attachment. It's not a permanent attachment. An open assembly, an open hole assembly. The bit is attached to the lift star by shear pins. Now here we are seeing a word, open hole assembly. What's an open hole assembly? Open hole assembly, closed hole assembly. Suppose the body is fixed with the the body is fixed the body is that is the body is already finished. What do we do after finishing the hole? We'll insert a core inside the hole. We never call it as a open hole assembly. Before doing it, we call this hole as open hole assembly. So the bit is attached to the whip stock by shear pits. The hole, the open hole assembly can accommodate any of these. That is ECDs, roller core, or cased hole. Bits. Any of these things we can attach it. It depends on the type of the side which you are drilling. After the whip stock is oriented at the anchor, that is. What we are going to do is, see, we are drilling, first we have drilled a hole in a vertical position. We have reached to a certain point with some calculations. And from, from that point, we need to deviate the drill bit to certain angle. So to certain angle, to a certain position also. So we keep this instrument, that is, we have star uh, to the exact position and we attach this to the drill bit. When you down this drill bit to the last point, what we do? We just move the, the drill string up and down so that after we, we be stuck, we just move the drill string up and down so that this attachment will be released. And then we pass the uh, drill string through the whip stock. And what happens? The whip stock it gives an angle to turn the drill. So automatically, it will, the bit will be turned and the string will also be turned. It will take its required angle. That is, 
after the web stack is oriented at the actual is set the beta of mill is separated from the web stack by exerting upward and downward forces to shear the pins see or seeing here the diagrams see here this is a little bit and this is the position this is the position where from where the drill bit will take the diversion then this is special type bit this mill it will have three cutting edges web stock system uses specially designed bits to create a window exit to the case see after drilling a hole we put a casing inside this hole this is a vertical drill which we already made it now from this point we want to take the diversion we want to take the diversion so to take this diversion back side we put the drill stock okay putting this web keeping this web stock back side the drill will move forward to so it will make a window in the casing and it will come out and it will makes its own way in a directional way. this will be it. see here 1 2 3 this is the outside is casing this is we call it as a lead mill huh? this we call it as a flow mill uh, follow mill and this we call it as a truss mill so what it will do the lead mill will cut the casing make a hole first we to make a rat hole and then we to make a big hole because it is in a conical shape i will show you in uh, in a bit that you know about this then when it goes out this mill will follow and huh? this mill will follow and the rough edges all this thing to remove and the final will this mill this mill will just the so web stock system uses specially designed base to create a window exit to the case after the last mill has passed through the case the mills are typically pulled and the directional drilling is run to the total depth now you can see the details here see this is casing this casing is cemented throughout the whole here this case this is cement we do the cementing both sides and this then this is casing the first part is cement then this is casing then this is lip stock so you see this lip stock is from here to here so what happened the drill stream has taken its angle from here to here so it is drilled this lead mill it is drilling it's going down and the, this is the follow is going to clean this hole perfectly and this is an arm pump there is a chisel point at the bottom of the this stock i will show you the diagram there is a chisel point at the bottom of the web stock which prevents the tool from turning when it is stabbed in the bottom of the hole it never turns so what happens it should go and stab the bottom and make a little uneven place there. at the top of the tool a heavy collar which helps the tool to withdraw from the hole the top of the collar the heavy say heavy collar it will help to withdraw from the hole the web stock is made up of as part of the bottom hole assembly so here the web stock is made up of as part of the bottom hole assembly a shear pin holds the tool in the drilling assembly so here pin will be there which will hold the drilling assembly the tool lower into the hole and 
oriented to the correct attitude. The tool is lowered, and the correct orientation will be obtained. As soon as the tool is stabbed in the bottom of the hole, the chisel point digs into the formation and the drill assembly released from the tool. So after making some place at the bottom, the drill assembly will be released to drill further. So the drilling will start from the edge, that is where it has been digged off. When the drilling operation continues, the topper of the ripstock makes the bit to penetrate to some deviated angle from the vertical position. After a section of pilot hole has been drilled at an angle below the ripstock, so initially what happens? It makes a little hole at an angle below the ripstock. Finally, the pilot hole is opened to full size. Then it will make a full size hole using a hole open assembly. So you are having, you are seeing three types of whip stocks. Number one, this is standard removal whip stock, which is used kick off wells. That is, you understand what is kick off, the point of turning, that is kick off. So after this point, we keep this and you can remove it. Again, you can put at some other place. This is a removal slip stock. Number two, circulating whip, whip stock. See, this whip stock will circulate the turn around the hole. So what happens when it turns? It makes an efficient cleaning of the bottom. It cleans the bottom. Number three, casing whip stock. It's used where a window is to be cut in casing for side track. See, when a when you want to cut a window, that is, when this whip stock is inside the casing, we want to make a turning. Just want to make an angle. So at that time, we are going to use this type of casing whip stock, which have a cutter at the bottom. You can see here, number one, that is lowering on orientating whip stock assembly. First, we will, what it is here, it is a string. This is whip stock, it is connected at the bit. Now, lowered it. So, you can see a sharp edge here. The sharp edge. Here. And it's also a taper is there. When you move, this tray string, uh, this string, automatically, when you move this drill string down, automatically it will take slight angle and it comes and it will take the maximum. This is, uh, this is, here it take little angle, it will take maximum angle, uh, it will make an angle here. Come out from this board to a certain angle. So here it has already taken a maximum angle. It has come out and is drilling forward. That is drilling the rat hole. This is what we call as a rat hole. Drill. A small hole will drill. It. That we call it as rat hole or rat hole. Two types we can call it: rat hole, rat hole or rat hole. That is drilling the rat hole. Pulling hip stock out of the hole. Then running the hole opener assembly. Then finally we'll take it out this one and we continue the hold from here to certain angle. So now we can see a drilling pit. That this is what we call it as jet pit. There are many names out there different parts. Say, a bit is made up of with some precious materials. Each part is having its own function. So many parts are. One of the important thing in this uh, drill bit is jet, J 
jets are there. There are there will be three jets around the circuit in the front position. From these three jets, a pressurized water will come out. If you lock the holes, nothing will happen. If you open the hole and send pressurized water, well, water will come out with high pressure. Say, suppose here one hole is there, one side, another side, another hole, another hole, there, another, the back side, another hole. So, what, what is here? It means at the circumference, at the circumference, uh, on the circumference, there are three holes are there. It is not at the center. Suppose if the hole is at the center, and if you open the hole, open the uh, water pressure here, it will make a somewhat a dig inside the soil in the center. If the hole is at the circumference, and if you open this hole with high pressure water, you know, it will make a dig at one side, that is at an angle. So the purpose of these holes are to make certain way to take the to drill the bit and follow that way. See jet bits. Drill bits, jet bits, some of the bits we are seeing here are there are most precious bits, different types of bits, different types of sides, different types of rocks. You can use this type of bits. All these are this are diamond beads and so many other beads are there. These beads are also known as bad beads. It can be used for deflection in soft formation. Where there is soft soil is there, you can use these beads. The jig bead consists of the three nozzles. For the deflection purpose, Two of the three jet nozzles of the bit should be closed or reduced in size and one nozzle the left open. So we can close two nozzles, open one bit or reduce the pressure. Anything we can do it, it depends on the side which is available there. The larger open nozzle should be oriented in the proper direction at the bottom of the It makes a way. So you are, you are seeing the nozzle has been opened. The vertical hole was like this, and it has taken a way to the left. After that, we are going to pass through the drill sink to pass this same angle. This jetting technique is used for deviating the borehole in soft formation. See jetting procedure. It is in three steps. Number one, it is jetting, jetting the water pressure to make and dig some to make, to dig the side. Number two, after doing this, the string will be moved up and down to make the hole soft and to increase the depth of the, the side. What they make. A little depth. Then number three is then you start the drill. After we're getting this angle, you start the drill. This is a one, two, three steps are there in jetting procedure. So requirements for jetting. A special jet bit is a standard soft formation tie cone bit. See a special bit with one very large nozzle and too small one can be used. The formation must be soft enough. So to do this operation, we need soft formation. But a hot formation, it may not be, it may not work. These penetration rates are greater than 80 feet per hour using normal drilling parameters. This to be 
suitable for jetting water. And again, a rig hydraulic horsepower would also be available. That is, providing mud, the mud velocity to the large jet should be at least 500 feet per second. So these are the requirements to need for jetting. So these are the diagrams of the jets. Where you can see the large CL and drapes. So finally, grading the milling assembly. See, what you are doing, you are milling the earth. By milling the earth and drilling the earth, milling the earth and moving the drill string inside the earth. I already, we already discussed about there will be three mills. One is drill, another middle mill and the last. So what happens, especially when you want to take a turning, take an angle through the casing, this end, that is, this, is, uh, this end mill, it may get blunted off. And the other mills also get blunted off. So, we'll have to grade the mill when you take out, out. And when you want to use this mill, at that time also, we'll have to grade the mill. That is, every component is measured and Cali and calibrated before going in the hole. Once the mill assembly is retrieved, each mill is graded for where? How much it got better? We have to know it. Otherwise, again, we will have to make correct size. The lead mill is designed to initiate the cutout and fill the window and the slice and the slides down the web stock. It also is the rat hole. The flow mill, that is, it is the middle mill, engages the casing and elongates the window. The dress mill, that is where it is laying it back, the dress mill removes a rough edges around the window. These are the activities of this mill. So, in the jet base, mud is pumped down at the bottom of the hole under the drill string without rotating the drill strings. So, without rotating the drill string, mud will be pumped inside the case. Mud jetting out action will take place by the open jet nozzle and Erode the formation in the required direction. Then the next step, what happens? Mud jetting out action will take place. After the washout of the small section of the formation, what it will do? It will wash out the small section of the formation. What is the formation? At the edge, at the most bottom edge, at one side, will have a little formation, some dig. So it will get cleaned off. An uneven surface is formed, and the drill string is rotated inside that uneven, uneven surface. The, the bit follows the part of the washout section where the surface is least resistant. What happens? The bit will follow this way and it will go on continuing the same angle. The washed out section is at an angle to the vertical and the bit penetrates further at the same angle to the vertical. So this will happen. This is applicable to only soft formations. See, this is positive displacement downhole motors. These are the displacement motors. This is the cross section of this motor, which we are seeing a spiral here. Seeing spiral again outside this casing is there. 
that is downhole motor is a positive displacement motor. The high drilling fluid enters into the high fluid power converted into mechanical energy and the rotor drives the principal shaft and beats rotating. What happened is much will come through it with a high pressure. Then with the high pressure, it will move on. See, downhole hydraulic motor with bent stuff. This is an extra connection here. See, this is a downhole motor. At the end, there is a drilling bit is here. This is a bent stuff. This is downhole motor with bent stuff. This may be used when you want to kick up the wells. So you are drilling vertically at certain point. You want to kick up. Kick up means we'll have to take another direction. You can use this. The bent stub will get bent to certain angle. Then you want to correct the bow. We can turn it to some side and correct the bow. Then we can also do the side tracking. That is, we have drilled. A bow which has gone out of the resources, you can use this instead, and you can drill another hose by the side track. Bend step is directly, bend step is placed directly above the motor. So this is the motor, the drill bed is a bend step. How a downhole motor can be employed? Rotary power is produced by the fluid of mud down the drilling stream. So it will run. So the rotary, we, we need a rotary power for running the drill. So rotary power is produced by the flow of mud down the drill stream. There are two basic types of downhole motors. One is turbine type unit. Another is positive type displacement. Positive, posit, positive displacement motor consists of a rubber line spiral cavity that is called stata. It has an elliptical cross section. A steel rotor with spiral shape is fixed inside the housing. When the mud is pumped with pressure, it enters the space between the rotor and the spiral cavity. This causes the rotor to be displaced and turned by the pressure of mud. This will happen here. I hope that you, you understood well what we have discussed about uh, this uh, drilling, site tracking, and so many topics we have discussed. But of course, it's a very short discussion. Oil and gas drilling is a huge subject. It's a long study. Uh, you need to learn many things. But it is a very good field. It's a very likely to feel for the employment purpose. You will get very good jobs all over the world. We have different branches. You can choose one interesting branch. See, one thing, people who passes the pre-tech examinations, they can also work in the oil and gas field. See, actually, I'm a mechanical engineer, but I work with oil and, work in oil and gas field. Like that, you can also work in the oil and gas field. 
we will get the best salaries compared to all, all over the world. Very big companies are handling this. Companies, extraction of oil, gas, and all, all these things. So, one thing is, suppose you want to get a very good job, want to go directly in the oil and gas field, and if any interest to study higher education, to study ME or MTech in petroleum exploration, or petroleum refining engineering, or in petroleum refining and petroleum engineering. That all this is one course. There are people who can join with uh, MTech plus BTech will get dual degrees is of five years or five years of duration. Okay, of course. You can do this one also. You will get a lot of jobs like drilling engineering, production engineering, chief petroleum engineer, offshore drilling engineer, reservoir engineer, well completion engineer, well design engineer. Of course, all these positions have higher positions. Then I will show you some of the other positions where you can make a spot. See here, one production. In the production, one is in the FPSO. Another is production, well completion, production line, optimization of wells, well testing, production operator, simulations, well sites, supervisor production, supervisor well control, completion consultants. Another is maintenance and inspection. Parity assurance, maintenance, welding inspection. This is one of the best fields in oil and gas industry. NDT, non destructive testing, is one of the best field in the oil and gas industry. That is quality control, maintenance management, quality assurance, inspector, magnetic particle testing, quality inspector. Quality manager, welding inspector, reliability asset. The third one is health, safety, and environment. Most of you will they may not be aware of this uh, uh, this uh, HS, but it's one of the important uh, thing that every industry should have. This branch. Because without HSC, no company can run. This is the government regulations. So, here there are some safety short courses of there that also you can do it. That is safety engineering, health and safety environment, environmental management, fire safety management, safety officers course, waste management, first aid. OSHA, Occupational Safety Health Administration, Confined Space Entry, Paramedic, Incident Investigations, and HSC Management. And still we have so many other opportunities that is besides oil and gas. That, that is a supporting for oil and gas. That is procurement, supply chain management, Logistic, purchasing materials, management, commissioning, construction, inventory management, project controls, planning and scheduling. Then coming to drilling rigs, directly on the rigs, drilling operations, rough make, directional drilling, floor hand, then roast up, then roast up, roast about drilling fluids. Derek man, tool pusher, drilling supervisor, drilling manager, drilling consultant, and driller. This is another field is there. Oil field services is also there. That is well controlled, mud logging, cementing, wire line, well logging, process control, wire line logging, well testing, slick line. Perforating coil tube.
yes. Just if you don't mind, I will ask you a few questions. Just say is question number one. The common reasons for drilling a deviated well and offshore is when drilling exploration from a floater. Is it true or false? Answer in the chats. This is question number one. Common reason for drilling a deviated well on offshore is when drilling exploration from a floater. Is it true or false? Answer in the chat. Number two, if a field lies just near offshore, it can be developed by drilling deviated wells from the shore. Whether it is true or false. Number three, a deviated well can be drilled to avoid drilling to the war hand cap of salt dough. Is it true or false? Question number four. If a blow occurs, it may be killed by drilling a deviated relief well at a distance away from the blow. Is it true or false? Question number five. If a section of broken drill pipe starts in the hole, it is cemented and then a new well did by the side. Is it true or false? So it's answer your answer in the chat. Just your own language. No much for this. Okay. Thank you very much for observing my videos. If you have any queries, please ask me. Yes, do you have any questions, please? Okay, I'm very, very much thankful to all of you. You have taken your valuable time to see my lecture and video. Once upon, thank you very much.